Your Majesty. Political rivalries, secret romances, luxurious lifestyles, and glamorous fashions are some of the things people talk about once they start watching The Crown. The partly fictionalized historical drama that follows the life of Queen Elizabeth II. What they don't talk about is the show's determination to protect the environment. We have a new sovereign. Beginning in the show's first season, the series producers worked with Green Shoot, an organization that helps film and TV productions reduce carbon emissions and increase efficiency. From the energy needed to power sets, including cameras, lighting equipment and studio facilities, to post-production and even costumes, just about every area was taken into consideration. Some of the measures they've implemented so far include performing energy audits, using solar generators and even ditching the usage of single-use plastic bottles on set. On one occasion, the crew used a train rather than a plane to travel to France, which helped them save around 95% of the production's carbon footprint. But the film and television industry still have a long way to go when it comes to operating more sustainably. According to the British film organisation BAFTA, just one hour of UK television, fiction or non-fiction, produces around 13 metric tonnes of carbon dioxide. The numbers aren't much better in Hollywood either. A report released in 2006 by the University of California reveals an average film is estimated to produce 500 tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions, which is equal to running more than 100 cars for a year. But there have also been some movies that have tried to give back to the environment, one being 2018's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. We're literally blowing up the island. Filmed mainly in the UK and Hawaii, most of the vehicles used during the shoots were hybrid and close to 75% of the lighting was LED. I like intensity. They also set up a food donation program to manage the daily leftovers from catering services and followed the same manner for all unused office supplies which were donated to local schools. It's a T-Rex, it's a T-Rex. And it's not the only mega production that has implemented such sustainability measures. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was honoured by the Environmental Media Association for its eco-friendly practices. Someone is creating a device the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot and HBO's Game of Thrones are other productions that have been noted for such efforts. I promise to fight for the living. But does going green on set cost more? Well, that's just a myth, according to Emily O'Brien, the co-founder of sustainability consulting firm Earth Angel. She says their eco-friendly approaches to productions they've worked with have helped them save $1.2 million so far. Although the attention being paid to sustainability across the industry is promising, there's another way filmmakers can raise awareness and inspire change. They could use their power to make movies that draw attention to the urgency of climate change as a way to remind us of our collective and individual responsibilities to tackle it. This is a climate emergency! Paul Evans is with me now. He is the co-founder of Green Shoes, a social enterprise that helps advertising, film and TV productions reduce carbon emissions and costs. Hi, Paul. Good to have you with us today on Showcase. So, let's start with this. Tell us about Green Shoot and what you do, and then we can um, delve deeper into sustainability in film and TV production. Okay. Um, yes, thank you for having me. Um, Green Shoot began in 2009 when sustainable production was something that wasn't on anybody's radar. Uh, and we actually, as an industry, didn't consider ourselves to be uh, a kind of an industry that needed to respond to, to the climate crisis. But um, starting Green Shoot meant that we could engage with productions and help them to be more sustainable. So as we are the founders of the company, we're all from the production industry. So we had an insight into production. We then did courses in uh, environmental management, which then allowed us to have the expertise to help productions reduce their carbon, reduce their costs. 
Um, and that's really has sort of 2009 was the beginning of a kind of, if you like, sustainable production revolution in the UK, which we reached the point now, 11 years later, where it is very much a part of pretty much every production's uh, um, prep is, is uh, involving some kind of sustainability measure. Okay, so what is the carbon footprint in film and TV production? Do you have any figures? Yes, we have a, a carbon calculator which we commissioned in 2009. Um, and we did the early productions we did were large feature films, um, Fast and Furious 6 and Sherlock Holmes. And at that stage, those productions were really thousands of tons of carbon were being produced. Um, and what we've done subsequently is uh, construct a online platform where productions can they sign up um, for the program. It's called Green Screen. Um, and they implement a bunch of mandatory measures that, uh, that means that they are sustainable and that reduces their carbon footprint. We will do carbon footprints for those productions that request it. Um, and actually, one of the productions we've worked on since 2015 is The Crown on Netflix. Um, and a direct result of that has meant that each season that is shot uh, has reduced its carbon footprint significantly. Okay, um, so I would assume that as the uh, budget becomes higher, it becomes bigger, uh, the carbon footprint is also worse, but is that how it works? Yes, in, in some respects, yes. But also um, what's happening is, is that new technology is coming in. So obviously we're all very much aware of electric cars. Within production, there are now um, solar generators. I mean, the vast amounts of... Basically, there are two heavy hitters within production. That's, that's uh, the, the travel component and the energy component. So if we can find ways of reducing them, then we're off to a good start. And there are innovations that are helping to reduce those direct emissions um, and reduce, subsequently reduce production's carbon footprint. But also what we've, we've innovated in the last few years is an, is an offsetting program. And if the ultimate ambition is to achieve carbon neutrality, then um, this offset program is a way to help productions achieve that. Um, you will never be carbon neutral entirely um, because there will always be productions that will use that will use standard lighting. They will use petrol or diesel cars. I mean, that's just the nature of the business currently. Um, but with an offset program, you can then uh, achieve that carbon neutrality, which is what everybody is looking to achieve moving forward. Okay, Paul, you said that um, in 2009, when you got into business, sustainability was in no one's radar. So I wonder how you think uh, is the awareness right now? Do you think it's moving slow, obviously, compared to uh, the pace climate change is uh, moving at the moment? It's increasing hugely, and that's a societal issue. Um, because we are all now so aware of sustainability within society. Um, we have many reminders, um, you know, California is still on fire. Australia was on fire last year. The, the, you know, the temperature is rising. Greta Thunberg, Extinction Rebellion are all key reminders of the climate crisis. So this is reflected in society. It's also reflected in production. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, Paul, you said that you if I haven't uh, you know, heard it wrong, you said that you work upon request, but I wonder if you ever go to production companies yourself, so uh, that I want to find out about what kind of resistance you face, if you face any. You know, the industry has changed hugely in these, in these 10 years. Um, and now, you know, we have people approaching us all the time, whether they are advertising productions, you know, whether they are film productions, drama productions, streaming services, they are approaching us and saying, look, you know, we really should be doing something about uh, the way that we shoot and, and can you help us? So essentially the, the situation is, is the reverse of what it was a few years ago. I think the last two years, the acceleration has been massive. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have much time left, but I really want, want to find out about the measures that uh, are taken and that could be taken on sets. The, the most front facing is the plastic water bottle. Uh, which is a, uh, a, a constant menace on film productions. 
So, you know, over the last few years, we've had a campaign where we've, you know, asked productions to to not use plastic water bottles, to use water coolers and canisters for crew. And this is now becoming uh, a, a, a basic setup for most productions. And that comes through to other areas like travel, obviously. You know, shooting abroad involves air travel. Well, why see if you can shoot here or if you're traveling abroad, then why not go by train instead of going by air? Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, the makers of the movie The Day After Tomorrow spent $200,000 to plant trees to help make uh, up for the estimated uh, 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions that they produced while filming. Do you think this is a good way to tackle this? Absolutely, because as, as I mentioned, that's the way to achieve a carbon neutrality. And this is what we're doing with many productions and, and we're doing with The Crown, for example. So we are retrospectively offsetting uh, previous seasons, and we are doing that. Um, we're working with an offset company, um, and that involves, uh, it's a two-part program, whereby we plant trees here in the UK, and we also use the money to fund NGOs mm -hmm. on the ground in areas where of deforestation, to prevent that deforestation happening. So maintaining the forests in areas like the Amazon and Madagascar. Yeah but planting trees domestically. Lovely, Paul. It was good having you on Showcase with us today. Thanks a lot.